I'd like for everyone to take a second and imagine something happens. Your phone rings right now and you get a terrible phone call. Your house is burned down. Who's the first person you choose to call? Is it maybe your spouse, a mom, probably your insurance agent? How about your child's soccer coach? No, that's not who I'd call either. But for a little boy who I coached a couple of years ago, his house burned down. And the first person his mom called was me because he had lost his uniform. And that uniform meant so much to him. Sports have an impact on our kids, a very real and tangible impact. They create a sense of belonging, of community, and of accomplishment for our kids. I don't think many adults would disagree that sports can provide a ton of great life lessons. They can teach kids great sportsmanship, how to lose with dignity, how to pick themselves up after a loss, and how to win. They can teach them how to work in a group. But sometimes we forget and think that sports are about getting that next college scholarship or finding a multi-million dollar contract. The fact of the matter is that most kids aren't going to get a college scholarship. In fact, only 8% of high school athletes will go on to get a college scholarship. And of that tiny 8%, only 2% more will go on to become a professional athlete. And that's okay, because the point of youth sports isn't really about a multi-million dollar contract in the end. I would like to ask everybody to re think about how we can reimagine sports so that youth development is really the purpose. Our kids have so much potential, and sports is a great way to guide that. Sports can play this great role, can teach kids to love a game, but more importantly, can give them health and wellness benefits, and it can provide them with a really strong mentor who can mean something to kids throughout their life. So I want to talk a little bit about those two things today, and I have to confess I was a history major, so you're going to have to deal with a little history with me real quick. Um, so beginning in the or late 1960s, we started to see a decline in deaths from diabetes-related diseases for our kids. But then in about 1985, those numbers started to increase again. Sadly, Nike recently did a, a study, and today's 10-year-olds are the first generation who are expected to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. That's a big deal. On top of that, we have a huge gap happening in our country. There are about 18 million kids in our country who are looking for a positive adult mentor in their life, but only 3 million are really able to find those. So there are 15 million kids in our country who need an adult who cares about them and can't find one right now. Finally, the Children's Defense Fund reports that one in three African-American boys born today and one in six Hispanic or Latino boys born are likely to end up in, in prison. Imagine if it's your son. Would you like their risk of imprisonment to be that high? I know I don't want that for my son. And also, oops, we are cutting physical education across the board for academic success. Our kids need to play and they need to be active. In fact, the more active they are, um, the President's Council on Fitness reports, the, they're more likely to be successful academically, to have increased attendance, and to have less behavioral issues. But we've made our, our world pay to play. Half of the kids, the Buffalo News just reported, half of the kids in the city of Buffalo live in poverty, and yet we expect them to get the benefits of sport or extracurricular activities, even though they have to pay for them. So the question becomes, what do we do? Our kids are becoming more unhealthy, um, physical fitness is constantly being cut, and they don't have positive role models. Do we sit back and let that happen? I say no. I want to tell you a quick story about one of uh, my favorite kids I ever coached. Um, a couple of years ago, I was coaching a travel team, which is a little bit above that house recreational level and below the kind of elite level of, of soccer. And this young lady came to us. She was a little bit heavier set, kind of quiet and shy. Her sister played with us as well. Um, and her sister kind of outsh outshined her. She was younger, but she was kind of the star in a way. And this young lady decided to play the goal. And she started to have a lot of success on the field. She made some great saves, and all of a sudden you see her kind of her confidence building. The kids are looking to her. They're sharing stories. They're laughing. She comes back and plays the next year. At the end of that season, she started high school at a Buffalo public school. 
and she tried out for the soccer team, and she made the varsity soccer team, and then she had the confidence to try out for the basketball team, and then she tried out for the tennis team, and she starts to get great grades, and she's a senior this year, and next year she's looking to attend either SUNY Binghamton or UB. Her story was changed from the confidence she got when she started to play sports. So our program, um, Buffalo Soccer Club, started in 2007, and in the fall of 2011, we were really excited. We felt like we were ready to take that next step. So we applied for the U.S. Soccer Foundation Soccer for Success, Soccer for Success Grant. Um, and the U.S. Soccer Foundation had been developing this program over a couple of years um, with a couple of core components in involved. Um, the program would run three times a week for 90 minutes. 60 minutes of that program would be really focused on moderate to vigorous activity. And it would run for 12 consecutive weeks twice a year. So the kids would get 24 weeks of soccer. The really cool thing about the program, I felt, was that the curriculum integrated health and wellness right into the everyday session. So the kids are playing soccer, but they're also learning health and wellness. Our coaches don't lecture on health and wellness. They integrate it into the program. So the example I use is when I was a kid, I played sharks and minnows. The sharks were in the minnow middle. The minnows tried to dribble their soccer balls across and not get tagged by a shark. What we do with our kids is we play snackers. So healthy snacks are in the middle, and the kids pick all sorts of healthy snacks. I'm always impressed, like, when we get kiwi or mango. And the junk food is on the other end. And I can tell you they know every chip and candy in the book. And those kids try to race across and not get tagged by the healthy snacks. When they get tagged by a healthy snack, they have to come up with their own healthy snack. So we've integrated these pieces really nicely into the program. The kids don't really realize, they don't feel like they're being lectured to. They're just learning nutrition information. So we applied for this grant um, with the United Way of Buffalo and Erie County and the Independent Health Foundation. And in January or February of 2012, we were, found out we were awarded that grant. And for me, personally, it was one of the proudest moments of my professional career. It was something that our collaboration took really, really seriously, is making sure this program had the value for Buffalo um, that it could. There were only 12 cities across the nation that were picked, and we were, we were really lucky to be one of them. Um, so in 2012, the fall, we started our program with some Buffalo Public Schools, some charter schools, and the Boys and Girls Clubs of Buffalo. And we learned how to run this program in a small gym with kids who don't have access to, to physical activity very often. Um, and we wanted to prove that the program was, was really making an impact. So we tested uh, BMI, body mass index, waist circumference, and cardiovascular endurance. And we measured the kids in the beginning, so we pre-tested them, and then we post-tested them. Um, and we've run this program for two and a half years now, um, working with about 1,200 kids. We've grown from 10 locations to 20. Um, and we've seen some really great, really great results. Um, and some of these are national and some of them are local. I'll share both. Um, so 79% of the kids who were at a high um, risk for health issues maintained or improved their BMI. 75% um, of them did that locally just here in Buffalo. 80% um, maintained or improved their cardiovascular endurance. Locally here in Buffalo, we have an 85% rate for that. And nationally, 75% um, maintained or improved their waist circumference. And the really cool thing about this was kids who are at high risk of, of health issues tend to continuously increase. So even maintaining showed success within the program. And that was something I didn't actually know in the beginning. I kind of learned through the program. Um, but the statistic that really stuck out to me we did a nutrition survey pre and post as well. And at the end of participating in the Soccer for Success program, 84% of kids said they enjoyed exercising more after playing. So if you think about it, 84% of our kids didn't really like exercise, and now they do. And the long-term health implications there for our kids and our community are astronomical. On top of the health and wellness benefits, um, we really focus on mentoring. There are 15 million kids without a mentor, and one-on-one -on -one mentors are going to be the best opportunity for a kid. But with 15 million kids looking for mentors, we need some other ideas. So our coaching staff, um, we train them on how to be positive mentors. There is one coach for every 12 kids. They arrive 15 minutes early to set up, and they stay 15 minutes after to, to take a session down. But during that time, the kids are able to come and talk to them if they need to. And you'd be surprised how many kids like picking up cones and putting down cones in order to have two or three extra minutes with their coach that day. Um, 
We work at about 20 sites with, like I said, around 700 kids. So we're hiring 50 to 60 coaches a year. So we spend a lot of time really focused and training the coaches on how to be mentors. We teach them, we're not going to scream at our kids to get their attention. We teach them how to get attention in a positive way. Um, we teach them how to manage behavior rather than just react to it, which is sometimes difficult in a tight gym space. And we teach them how to develop strong, meaningful, and appropriate relationships with the kids. Um, I had a mom come to me. We have a family day at the end of every year. And I had a mom come to me recently and tell me that her daughter, who was nine in third grade, had very few friends. She had some social issues and some developmental issues. And after playing in the soccer program, she was talking to the other girls in her grade, and she had some friends. And this mom felt like the coach had really impacted her and given her the confidence to take that step and go outside of her boundaries. Stories like that and moments like that happen all the time in our program because our coaches are making the environments fun and safe for every kid, no matter their ability level and no matter where they're coming from. What's great about this program is that it doesn't have to be just soccer. Um, our, our program actually hopes to move into other sports eventually. It doesn't have to be just Buffalo, and it doesn't even just have to be the U.S. Sports have an impact, and if our communities and our programs are focused on what we want to achieve, um, what is really important for the community and the players and their families and put that first, and if we look and train our coaches to look at the long-term impact we can have on our community, we can make sports great again. I believe that the greatest gift we can give our children is the opportunity to live long, healthy lives and to have positive people in their life on a consistent basis. People ask me all the time, what do you get out of your program? What do your kids get out of your program? And I always laugh because I can think of a hundred stories and thousands of kids, and I know that nine times out of 10, I don't get to see the end result. But I know that this program is making a huge impact on kids. Together, by making sports youth development focused and not just about wins and losses, we can make sports great again for our kids. Thank you.